what is going on you guys this is tech hd coming at you with a brand new video and today i'm super excited for this video because we are going to get into vr gaming specifically vr streaming and so i wanted to dive into it see what i need to get in order to stream on twitch or youtube and uh see how it overall performs so i reached out to oculus and they were kind enough to provide me with the oculus quest 2 this is the refresh model so they this one has the 128 gig storage as well as the 120 hertz refresh model and then they also provide me with the data link cable so thank you oculus so much for providing Providing me with this I do want to let you guys know that this video is not sponsored by oculus uh, they did not pay me or anything like that no money was exchanged during the process of this video and they don't get to see this video before it comes out so I will let you guys know the pros and cons when it comes to it and but I did buy these other things with my own money so we also got the anchor uh, oculus charging station to make it nice and organized of course and then we got the wireless mod mic uh, from Antelon audio and I want to see if this is all the stuff that I would need to hook this up to my PC in order to use Steam games and uh, to stream on Twitch, use with OBS, and then as well as a microphone so that you guys could be able to hear me when I'm moving around and stuff. So without further ado, let's dive into this. Let's unbox each one of these products and then let's see how it is when it comes to streaming. And if you guys do want to see me live on stream, I'll leave a link down in the description below to my Twitch. It is twitch.tv slash tech underscore HD1. And so you guys can go check it out. Let me know what you guys think about it and let me know what games I should play because I have a good idea of a couple games like Half-Life Alex as well as um, Beat Saber and some other horror games. I want to get into that and see how it is. But let's go ahead and dive right into it. So now taking a look at what we get in the box, you got the documents, the USB-C to C charging cable with the wall brick, the Quest 2 left and right remote, the headset itself, the glasses spaces, and finally the silicone cover. We also got the data link cable from Oculus and it is 16 feet long and it is a USB-C to C so if you want to stream some Steam VR games which is what we'll be doing today. Now taking a look at the ports and I.O. of the Oculus Quest 2, on the left you have a USB-C port to charge the headset or you can use the data link cable to connect to your PC and you also have a headphone port. On the right you have the power button and an indicator light and finally on the bottom you have the volume up and down buttons. Taking a look at the lens you have three adjustment positions to best suit your eyesight and to add the glasses spaces you would need to remove the facial interface and apply the spacer first and it just clicks in and then just reapply the facial interface and then you'll see there's a little bit more space for your glasses and it is much more comfortable. Speaking of comfort, taking a look at that, adjusting the side and top head strap was easy and feels comfortable. The soft fabric face cover on the Quest 2 is comfortable but can be slippery if your head strap isn't tight so I would need to adjust it every once in a while. The silicone cover in my opinion is my favorite and adds more grip to the face so it doesn't slide so often. There are a ton of third party face covers and head straps online so you can definitely find something that fits your need. One thing I will mention is when I try to use my glasses, it gets tight and uncomfortable and difficult to put on and remove them. You need to have small frame glasses in order for it to fit and even then, some people are afraid of scratching the lenses on the Quest 2 with their glasses. On top of that, I'm able to see a little bit of the floor where my nose is so it doesn't fully seal it and takes away from that immersion a bit. So what I did was I purchased the Oculus Fit Pack which comes with a wide face cover so I'm now able to easily use my glasses with the Quest 2 and not have it be so tight and able to easily remove and put on the Quest without struggling. On top of that the Fit Pack comes with some light blockers to apply onto the lenses so you won't be able to see the floor as much and it protects from having your glasses touch the lenses and it has helped a lot. I'm still able to see the floor but not as much as before so that is a plus. Like I said before, there are third party face covers that have some built in light blockers and there are some protective ring covers to protect the lenses from your glasses. You are also able to purchase some prescription lenses to apply so you won't need to use your glasses. That's the best option but is also the most expensive but I personally think it would be worth it and I will eventually get them and try them out. Now let's get into setting up the Quest 2 for streaming on platforms like Twitch. First you'll of course need to set up the Quest 2 with an account and connect to your Wi-Fi. Mess with the settings a bit. After that you'll want to use the link cable and plug one end into your PC. If your PC doesn't have a USB-C port like for example my PC, then you can use an adapter to convert USB-C to USB type A and make sure that you plug it into a USB 3.0 port to get the best bandwidth speed. After that connect the other end into the Quest 2. Now on the computer you'll want to download the Oculus software in order for this to all work. Once that's installed and you have the Quest 2 connected and log in, I recommend going into the device tab and clicking on the Quest 2 and run a USB test to make sure that it's getting the speed needed to play some Steam games and there is no issues. After that go to the advanced graphics preference and since this is a refresh model with 128 gigs, it also has support for 120 hertz so I recommend selecting that. You can also do it on the Quest 2 if you don't want to run on PC. 
So now that we got all that set up, next we'll want to set up Steam for VR. Go to the Steam and install the Steam VR. Once that's installed, next you'll want to install the Live application to be able to see the chat while wearing the VR. Once that's installed, launch the application and launch the streamer kit. Connect to your Twitch account and then you can mess with the settings in the chat tab and mess with the position and general settings. I personally like to have it connected to my left hand for when I turn it, I can easily see the chat. So if you like it that way, you can copy the settings that I have and you can mess with it later. But now you'll be able to see your chat while you're playing VR games. You will need this open in order for it to work while you're gaming. Now you can start to purchase games that are VR compatible and install them, but do not launch them or Steam VR on your computer. It won't work correctly. You'll want to launch them on the Quest 2. So to do that on the Quest 2, you'll see a message to give your computer access to your headset. Click allow. After that, go to your quick settings on the bottom left and then select Oculus Link. It'll show a different layout and once everything is loaded, on the bottom right, select desktop. You now have control of the desktop from the Quest 2. You can now launch Steam VR and it should load everything up correctly. From there, you can see that the live Twitch chat is working and you can launch the games that you have installed. Now, some games will not open up full screen and will instead be in the window mode, like for example, Half-Life Alex. So to fix this, go to Steam and select on the game, right click and select properties. In the launch option, type dash full screen in the box with no space and it should work. Now, there are some games that won't show you the Twitch chat automatically like Super Hot VR and The Walking Dead. So to fix that, go to Steam, select a game, right click and select properties. In the launch option, type dash VR mode space open VR. After that set, right click the game again and select manage and then browse local files. Go to the .exe game file and right click it and select properties. Go to compatibility and select the run this program in compatibility mode and select Windows 7. After that, click apply and OK and that should fix the issue and you should now be able to see the Twitch chat in while in the game. After that, you are ready to game and Steam VR games. I use OBS Studio to capture my game and the Elgato sound capture application for the audio. And I use the mod mic wireless to capture my audio and I use the SteelSeries Arctic 3 to hear the game audio. I play using the boundary settings since I don't have that much room in my studio and it has been working great and really tells me if I'm too close to an obstacle. So after streaming and testing the Quest 2 for about a month now, I didn't know that there was a lot to learn for getting started while streaming VR games, but once you get it all set up and you stream a few times, you really start to get the hang of it. While I was streaming, I was first struggling and figuring out how to do everything like not opening the Steam VR application and games on the computer, but instead through the Quest 2. Also trying to figure out how to make some of the games full screen and how to show the live Twitch chat on all the games I played. Once I got that all figured out, it was actually pretty easy and it was a lot of fun. I played games like Half-Life Alex, The Walking Dead, Phasmophobia, Beat Saber, Super Hot, and it was easy to just get started and stream. The whole viewing experience was nice and detailed and that 120 hertz felt nice and smooth. The only thing I noticed is the motion of some games like The Walking Dead and Phasmophobia. It felt smooth but not smooth enough for me and it gave me a bit of motion sickness and headaches. I was able to switch the motion in Phasmophobia to snapping feature like in Half-Life Alex, but I couldn't do that to The Walking Dead. Maybe playing the game more will help me get used to it to the point that it doesn't bother me as much. Now I did also try to stream my Quest 2 wirelessly and it seemed to work pretty good. First I tried the Airlink feature, but I couldn't find a way to get that to work and stream um, some of my Steam games and that's also in beta so that might be a reason why. So what I also wanted to try out is to stream some of my Oculus games like Beat Saber and what I did was I casted it onto my PC through the link and it worked pretty well and better than I expected. I was able to get a full screen of it and capture audio as well and the delay seemed very minimal like half a second. The audio seemed to be a little bit out of sync but barely noticeable to the point that it bothered anyone. As long as you have good internet, it is actually pretty doable and you'll still be able to capture a good experience for both yourself and the stream. I also casted the Quest 2 onto my TV in the living room so when I have friends and family over, we could all see and have fun playing some games. Now in the time of me playing with the Oculus Quest 2, I purchased a couple other things to make the experience better and to customize my Quest 2 even more. First, the Anchor Charging Station works great and I love having an actual space to put my Oculus Quest 2 away while at the same time charging it. Next is the ModMic Wireless and it has performed great but I do want to make a separate video on just that so I won't be saying much right now but it has performed great for playing VR games. The next thing I purchased was the Oculus Fit Pack and I was using this for a while but I did just recently switch to a third party face cover that has better light 
blocker in the nose area and prevents light leaking and it performs great and is really comfortable. Next is this Kiwi Elite head strap and this is super comfortable with the extra padding on both the top and on the back and I love the way to adjust it as well. The only thing that I don't like is the side strap is too rigid and thick to be able to put a headset on it so it is a bit disappointing so I might need to find a little bit of a better solution. And the next thing is also this lens protect cover and this is great to prevent dust or scratching onto the lens and I mainly got this because where I keep the lens is by a window and throughout time the sun can damage the lens so this helps a lot when preventing that. On top of that I also got a lens cleaning pen to remove any dust and smudges and to keep the lens nice and clean. Lastly are two cable management accessories that I highly recommend. First is if you are using a headset, brands like SteelSeries, Astro Gaming, and Turtle Beach have a shorter cable specifically for VR headsets and this helps prevent any tangles or accidentally pulling the cable. And lastly, if you are using the link cable, I highly recommend getting it off the floor so you don't step on it and get tangled up and accidentally trip. Instead, mount the cable onto the ceiling and get this pulley accessory specifically for VR headsets and this will help you keep your cables nice and organized and give you the ability to move freely without any tangles. Those are the accessories that I would highly recommend taking a look at to both protect your Oculus Quest 2 and to keep it nice and clean while having the best immersive experience. I overall love my experience with the Oculus Quest 2 for both gaming and streaming and there are just some things to know about and some extra things to purchase before you start to stream but I can't wait to try out more games and for the VR to improve and get overall better. But there you guys have it, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys do have any questions or concerns, please let me know down in the comments below as well as everything that I mentioned in the video will be linked down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, please like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch. As always, TechHD, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!